Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, if people can turn off their mics, that makes it a lot easier for us. OK, so yeah, so the recording has started now, so I'll, I'll make a start. Oops. So just to explain a little bit of background to the opportunity, this year, um, not only are we celebrating 30 years of the British Council in Vietnam, but also we're celebrating 50 years of UK Vietnam diplomatic relations as well. So as part of this, we're creating what we call the UK Vietnam season. And we have a range of activities under our arts, our education and our English programmes and portfolios. So in June of this year, you'll be hearing about a big launch event on the 14th of June. And this scholarships programme is very much a flagship part of the English programmes activities for the season, for the 30th anniversary anniversary season uh, of, Viet of uh, British Council in Vietnam this year. So our objectives for the scholarship scheme is, are really two, threefold. One is to identify a select group of English language teachers or teacher educators, high performing English language teachers who can further their skills and knowledge. So we hope that among, amongst you uh, we'll be able to find some. We have over 60 people so far. And we're going to offer fully funded placements for uh, teachers, teacher educators from Vietnam to study a, an online master's course in English language teaching offered by Ulster University. They're our partner for, for this round. And also to ensure that the main study activity is going to be supported by both Ulster University and British Council here in Vietnam. So we're planning a series of activities. Kane will talk more about what Ulster University are going to be offering and also as we go through the programme, we and my colleagues here in British Council of Vietnam are also hoping to offer some activities for you as alumni from the programme. Why? That is so that we increase the engagement amongst the community and amongst the teacher community and we get more impact from your learning as well. Working. So those are the three objectives. Bear with me a second. OK, so why are we offering these scholarships? So in, in case you don't know, the British Council provides opportunities for English language teachers and teacher educators to access world leading CPD, continuing professional development opportunities so that you can reach your fullest potential. So through these scholarships, uh, the Vietnam scholarships for the season, we hope that the chosen scholars from Vietnam, oops, <clears throat> can increase your knowledge and understanding about English language teaching, learning and assessment from a recognized course and a reputable institution in the UK. Also that you can act as ambassadors for UK postgraduate education in this field of English language teaching. And also share your positive experiences with a professional learning community. And also so that you can bring your knowledge and experience from Vietnam uh, to to the UK, to Northern Ireland, and to the, the student community there in uh, Ulster University. And then, in, as I mentioned earlier, in the longer term, we really hope that the, the scholars, the selected scholars, this is perhaps the most important thing, will support the development and the improvement of English language teaching here in Vietnam, in your communities, in your local communities, and also within the wider ELT sector here in Vietnam. So that's some of the key the key rationale behind the scholarship program. So what will the scholarships cover? Hopefully you've seen in the, in the website, we will cover the tuition fees, which have been covered by a combination of uh, funding from British Council in Vietnam and Ulster University, um, an IELTS exam fee for those of you who require um, uh, an English language qualification. And then also as part of the program, Kane is going to talk more about this in just a few minutes. You, there'll also be uh, next summer, in the summer of 2024, there'll be a two week face to face program in Northern Ireland. And for that, we'll cover um, some a stipend for, the, for those two weeks um, to include accommodation and living costs, the travel costs, the, the um, airfare from Vietnam to the UK, to Northern Ireland, as well as any visa or insurance costs as well. So that's what the scholarships are going to cover. How will you be selected? I'm not going to spend too much time on this because Kane is going to outline that in, in just a few moments. But what I would say, the, the things that I've highlighted there are perhaps the most important ones. 
you need to make sure that your English language is at the required level for Ulster University and for postgraduate study in the UK. Um, you need to make sure that you're working in or directly with the government education sector in Vietnam. We know we've had a few questions around this and we'll, we'll come back to that later. What do, we, what do we mean by that, especially in terms of working in Vietnam, the education system and with the Vietnamese curriculum. And as we've already mentioned earlier, it's really important that you, through your application, can demonstrate your commitment and your contribution to the development of English language teaching, learning and assessment here in Vietnam during your program, your two year program and after um, through activities that you plan with your schools, with your local community, with through your DOET and through the wider English language teaching community here in Vietnam. Um, who is not eligible for a scholarship? These are quite specific. I imagine they probably won't apply to many people. So unless you're hopefully you're not an employee of um, the UK government or a UK government department or an employee of the British Council or a relative of someone from the British Council. And as long as you meet those criteria, then you, you should really be eligible for the for the scholarship. But again, Kane, Kane will talk more about that in, in just a few moments. And that's it from me. That's a very quick introduction to the program, to British Council's involvement and why we're doing it. As I mentioned before, please, any questions, put them into the chat. We'll have some time after Kane has spoken to address the questions. And we're also going to create a frequently asked questions, an FAQ document that we can then share and upload on the website so that you can come back in your own time and and look at some of the questions and our responses to those questions. Okay, so that's it from me. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Kane, who is, I want to say good morning, Kane, who is in Northern Ireland. Over to yeah. you, Kane. Morning, thanks, Davide. Um, I'm just going to um, share my PowerPoint presentation. So. Hopefully, you should be able to see the screen at the moment. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. can see the first screen now. <laughs> OK, um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Ken Barriskill. I'm a, a lecturer here at Ulster University within the School of Education, and I look after um, a part of the MIT cell, and this is the scholarship for which you are applying. OK, just sorry, I'm just letting a few late late arrivals into the room. Um, so briefly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the university, a little bit about the actual MEDT so program. Um, and I'll also talk about your trip to Northern Ireland, and then we'll look at the application process as well. And um, if you do have um, any questions, um, please put them into the, the chat box. So, um, Ulster University, welcome to Ulster University. Ulster University, where we are situated in, in the UK, but in a special part of the UK in uh, Northern Ireland. Um, we are one of the top 50 universities in the UK and one of the top 25% in when it comes to world leading research. We, we have approximately 30,000 students spread across our campuses in Belfast, Korean, Korean, Derry, London, Derry, and we also have a, a campus in London as well. Uh, but you guys will be focusing the Korean campus or our main campus. Um, it's also one of the, uh, the happiest universities in the UK and our MIT saw program is the oldest such course in Ireland and it is very, making it um, an internationally recognised course. Um, So, MATSL, the MATSL uh, program at Ulster, the, the masters that you're interested in applying for within this scholarship um, is an absolutely fantastic qualification to have. Um, the modules have been really specifically chosen and carefully designed to equip the modern language teacher in their successful career. But within this program that you'll be studying, we will be focusing on really helping you um, to contribute to your to the wider edu educational context within your own country, within Vietnam. So we're not just going to help you to be better teachers. We're going to help you to actually share that information with your colleagues, 
uh, with with the wider education community throughout Vietnam. And the whole aim of this from Ulster University's point of view and British Council's is that we can really help to enhance English language education within Vietnam. Now, there are a number of modules that you'll study. Uh, for one of the modules is your English language teaching methodologies. We look at all the different methods, met methodologies, approaches and techniques that are used in language teaching. Uh, we critically evaluate these and this really helps you to form your own personal methodology um, and a methodology that you can adapt to the context in which you're teaching. Uh, moving on, um, you will also st study learning, language learning and acquisition. So this is um, a theoretical module uh, with practical implications. And we really look at first language acquisition, how children learn language, and we feed that into second language acquisition, how we learn a second language. Um, and that really helps us to inform our practice within the classroom because we can use a lot of those um, kind of theories. We can apply them to our language classroom and ultimately help our students become better at what they're aiming to do. Then we do knowledge about language. Now, this is my module, so I, I'll be teaching you with this one. And it's essentially a linguistics module. Um, we look at the development of English over time, how English has changed from you know, a very, very early tribal language to a language that's taken over the world, to a language that's actually formed into many different versions of English. We look at, you know, complex, the mechanics of language, how la the English language is all put together. You'll have an opportunity to study an unknown language. Um, and this gives you the, the kind of um, helps you to understand what a student goes through if they have no knowledge of of a particular language. So it gives you a lot of empathy as well. And also you get to the chance to engage in an individual learner case study. So we will assign you a learner of English uh, and you will work with that uh, student to kind of assess them and identify their needs and create a learning plan. Um, Currently, we work with a university in China. So we usually match our students with a student in China to help them, that particular student, um, to, to develop their knowledge. Um, moving on then, teaching practice. If this is a very practical uh, program, and we will really help you to develop a kind of a critical, um, reflective approach to your own practice. And this will result in you developing a comprehensive teaching portfolio, which will include your experiences here in Northern Ireland, but also your teaching within your own context in Vietnam. And it will also give the opportunity to observe your classmates and your colleagues as well. Now, this is a master's program in, in the United Kingdom, so it will be necessary for you to develop research skills. Um, and all um, postgraduates here at Ulster, we, we study research methods. So you'll take a research methods module, learning about primary research, secondary research, ethics, different approach is to research. Uh, this will ultimately help you with your final project, your dissertation, but it would also help and to inform your practice because you will be able to employ what we call action research in your own context as well. So, that's the modules that you'll be studying. Now, it is an online um, program, so you will be studying uh, from Vietnam. However, we do want you to come and see us over at Ulster University. So as part of your scholarship, you will receive a, a, a fully funded two week visit to Northern Ireland, and this will happen uh, in June 24, 2024. And you will be based on our Coleraine campus in the beautiful, beautiful North Coast of Ireland where I live. During that first week, we'll welcome you to the campus. We'll show you around. You'll have time to explore our fantastic library. And then you'll engage in a number of continuing professional development workshops. Uh, you'll start to work on creating your teaching portfolio. But we will also um, run a, a few sessions to help you to understand uh, British, British and Irish educational policy and practice. And you'll be able then to contrast that to what's happening within your own country and maybe be able to observe um, practices that you can take back with you. Now, the second week that you're here in Northern Ireland, we will um, place you in a local school here in Northern Ireland. Um, so you'll be put into it might be a primary school, 
uh, it may be a, a secondary school or it may be a further education college uh, working with uh, older level students. So you will have one week, uh, which will be a really fantastic experience for you to see how the education system actually works here in Northern Ireland. Um, and you'll be working with our students, our Northern Irish students, and you particularly may be working with students who have come from other countries to Northern Ireland and whose English level is perhaps needs to improve. These are what we call EL students in the UK. Um, so this would be a really fantastic opportunity. But it's not all work when you come here. Um, we're going to show you a really good time as well. You'll have an opportunity to, to explore Ireland's beautiful North Coast, which is one of the, the most beautiful coasts in, in the whole of Europe. Um, you'll get to go to Belfast, um, a sightseeing trip to Belfast, a trip to our second city in Northern Ireland, which is Derry or London Derry. Uh, you'll be able to visit the Titanic Museum and we'll also bring you to see some traditional Irish music as well, which is a really important part of Irish culture. So that's a kind of an overview of the course, but um, so you'll see here I've, I've put together a kind of a programme structure. So you will start in September 2023 of this year uh, and you're in your first semester. You will have a nice programme induction. You will study mining linguistics, more general knowledge about language, and you will also engage in a number of sessions uh, to help you develop your academic skills. And this will, these sessions will help you to um, adjust to the expectations of British higher education. Uh, which may be something which you're, which is new to you. Uh, you'll learn how to use the library systems, how to do research, how to write an appropriate academic style, uh, how to critically evaluate things and, and so forth. And this will all feed into all of your modules to help you improve. In your second semester, you will do ELT methodologies along with what we call micro teaching. So a chance to put new ideas into practice in front of your tiers in front of your peers and then you also visit Northern Ireland. Then when we move to September 2024, you'll have that summer off and we we'll start our language le learning acquisition and your research methods modules. Um, semester four will be developing your teaching portfolio. So a lot of this will be self-directed work. And finally is your dissertation, which is the last piece of work that you will do. And um, it's a wonderful opportunity to focus on something that's really important or really interesting for you. Now, uh, Davide has already covered um, a lot of the eligibility criteria, um, but I'm just going to reinforce a few things here. Um, we are expecting a lot of applicants for this fantastic opportunity, um, but unfortunately we need to select the right applicants. For Ulster University, for a postgraduate degree, we need what's called a second class honours degree from your bachelor's degree, your undergraduate, and I believe in Vietnam this would be equivalent to a 6.0 from 10 or a GPA of 2.6 if you studied in that kind of system of university. Um, our English re language requirements for this particular uh, programme are an IELTS 6.5 or equivalent with no lo lower than six in any skill. Now, I've, I know a few of you may have, um, your IELTS may be out of date, but please don't worry, you can still apply. Um, if you are successful, we will help you to put, put you through your IELTS, but please note, if you do not reach that level, even if you're offered the scholarship, uh, we will have to offer it to someone else. Uh, as I mentioned, you need to be a Vietnamese citizen. You need to be working directly uh, with the government sector um, or in relation to that. OK, and there's some in eligibility as well. We want to offer this opportunity to students who have not had it before. So if you've already studied in the UK at degree level, um, you would be ineligible. As well, you cannot hold dual British citizenship and some other aspects are, for example, you can't work for a British government institution. Now, moving on um, to our application process. Now, this will be part of the most useful part of this presentation for you. Our application is open today, so you may apply from today, and you but you do have one month uh, and the application will close on the 29th of May. 
please uh, apply through the Ulster University Scholarship page and I'll put that link in the chat box um, just as soon as I finish my presentation. Um, it will be available on our websites as well. Do not apply directly to the university at this stage through the um, uh, through our applications process. This is simply because um, if you apply directly through the university, we won't see your scholarship application um, and therefore you miss, may miss out on this opportunity. Only successful scholars will be asked to apply through the university's normal processes. Um, so our applications finished on the 29th of May and uh, myself and uh, my British Council colleagues will be shortlisting candidates um, in early June. We will then contact you if you have been shortlisted and uh, and this will result in an interview. Uh, it will be an online interview with um, representatives from Ulster University and representatives from British Council of Vietnam. These will take place on the 19th to the 23rd of June. They will be online, so don't worry, you do not need to travel. Um, confirmation will for our successful candidates and also our reserve candidates. We will have a few reserve candidates in case a successful candidate cannot um, go forward with the scholarship. And the, you'll be contacted before the end of June. Successful uh, candidates will then be directed to apply through Ulster University's admissions website uh, and you will need all your necessary documentation to do this, but don't worry, we'll support you with applying through this, um, but that will be your final stage. So that's our application process. Um, let's look at our application questions, OK? The application is open. But I want to tell you about the questions to give you the best time um, to prepare as well. The application form consists of a total of 25 questions. 15 questions will relate to personal information and eligibility criteria, so they're, they're quite easy to answer. However, 10 questions will require a written answer and your responses for these will be used to shortlist. So we really want to make our responses very, very good. You want to show off the best that you can be uh, for us to select you. So therefore, it's really important that you take your time to prepare and provide these best possible answers. All answers are limited to 300 words. So it's really about kind of really showing off as much as you can, but being concise uh, in your writing. There is one answer which is a little bit longer, and I'll show you that in a few moments. So the first few questions just relate to your education on your work background. So you would give details of your bachelor's degree. What was it in? Perhaps what modules you studied, what university uh, that you studied in? And also if you have already uh, a postgraduate qualification or a higher, um, you can provide some information with, about this. And then we also want to know what you do in your current role and what are your main responsibilities? And that will give us a, a kind of an important insight to who, who you are. Moving on then, we'll have a number of questions related to English language teaching within the context of Vietnam. Um, the first question we'll ask here is, what do you think are the key challenges uh, teachers of English in Vietnam face? And what role could you see yourself playing in tackling these challenges? Then either describe an activity you do for your own professional development or how and how you do you evaluate its effectiveness or to describe a professional development project or activity that you delivered and how it positively affected those around you how would you how would gaining the scholarship uh, and studying the master's degree at ulster uh, help you as an english teacher in vietnam and then lastly what do you think would be the biggest challenges to undertaking an online master's degree at Ulster University and how you would overcome these. Um, now that's an important question because, um, you know, a master's degree is not easy. It does take a lot of work and does um, take a lot of work and it doesn't take a lot of commitment. And studying online can also be a little bit more difficult. It can be a little more challenging in terms of that you need to be very motivated and you need to be very organized. And as you guys will be all working as well, you need to be able to balance this postgraduate study around your own work and your own 
uh, personal commitments as well. And um, because we do not want you to, to, you know, to drop out halfway through and uh, miss out on this fantastic opportunity. Then we'll talk about your potential as an English language teaching leader. Now, earlier in the presentation, I mentioned that, you know, th this program is not just about improving you personally, it's about improving um, English language education within Vietnam as a whole. And we want our graduates to be leaders within doing this. So we want you to think about how, how studying at a UK university will help your future career advancement advancement and your contribution capacity building to the socio-economic advancement of, of Vietnam. After completing your master's, how do you plan to implement your learning in ELT and educational technologies, which we will look a lot at during your programme, to benefit students and learners, teachers, educators and other stakeholders within your community? And then we have our final question, which is 500 words, which is a British Council question, so don't blame me. Um, during your during and after your studies, how do you intend to be an active member of British Council's Global Alum, Alumni Network, maintain contact with British Council Vietnam and act as an ambassador to the UK? Because we really want to bring our closest, our countries closer together, especially the, the fact that it is um, UK Vietnam season. So just some key advice from me before you would begin with your application. My key advice is do not rush. You've got a one month really from today to start working on your application and the best applications are those that candidates spend time on. So really do prepare. Um, it's, it's a really good idea to kind of complete your responses. I've given you the questions. So now, you know, complete these responses offline. So work on them on, on a Word document, something like that, before you try it, before you open the application form. And this will allow you to, to kind of proofread your work well and spell check everything to review it. And then you simply copy and paste your answers over. And that's a much better approach than just trying to type everything into the online application form. Do some research. We expect postgraduate students to be researchers, so we would like to see, you know, well researched answers, people using supporting evidence, uh, people referencing uh, relevant sources rather than just answers which are simply based on your own opinion. Um, so far, I've we've already had um, five, oh, nearly 500 uh, expressions of interest on these scholarships and we still have one month to go. So the competition is going to be very, very tough and only the, the kind of the best of the best will get these scholarships. So you really need to make your application stand out uh, amongst all of these other hundred applications. So really think about that and really think about how you can make your applications special and stand out. Um, you are all English language teachers, so we expect well written, uh, accurate um, responses. It will be a, quite a poor reflection in you if your if your application answers contain language errors or are just generally poorly written or poorly organised. It's really important, you know, you are trying to sell yourself, but it's very important that everything that you write within your application is 100% truth, truthful. So please be honest in your application. Um, plagiarized answers, any answers which are plagiarized or being copied from another source will be immediately identified because the applications run through um, similarity detection software, which will Im immediately identify anything which has been taken from another source. And then we will just simply reject your application and we won't look at it any further. Um, any false claims that are made will, will be very obvious when it comes to the interview stage, because we will be asking you a lot about the things that you have said within your application. So, you know, be the best, show the best that you can be, but everything must um, have evidence as well. So that's really all from me. Um, I just want to wish everybody good luck with their applications. Um, and I look forward to, to reading them and to meeting you all as well. Um, and I think we're going to hand back to 
the other day and we're going to see if there's any questions yes thanks kane for all that information i hope you can hear me yeah lots and lots of questions <laughs> some of them which can come to british council and some of them which maybe go to you kane and ulster and also my other colleagues here as well um yeah let's try to um look first of all people were asking about um ielts and other um english language proficiencies so yeah there's one here just at the end the cefr based on pearson edi jet set i don't even know. i'm afraid i don't even know that <laughs> so i think yeah my answer would be <clears throat> my answer would be in terms of the the language proficiency i'm not sure what kane would say i mean obviously for the uk we typically use ielts as a guide people have been referencing a cefr and other tests toefl or equivalent again kane you said 6.5 and nothing nothing lower than six is that right in any of the four skills <laughs> yes uh, that that's what we're looking for at the minute we do accept equivalencies um, we don't accept all equivalencies that there are certain um, uh, exams that we will accept and certain ones that we won't. TOEFL is absolutely fine. Any Cambridge based assessments are absolutely fine. Um, I believe we are accepting Pearson at the moment. Um, but if you have um, any doubts about your English language qualification, please just go on to the um, university, Ulster University website and look um, at the um, criteria it, it, it's all there about what we accept or what we don't accept um, if there is any doubt as David said we will you will be able to take an, an IELTS test if you are a successful candidate okay there are things that we don't take such as TOEIC, Duolingo those kind of assessments we don't accept we don't recognize here or else yeah Thanks. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that because, yeah, we had some, I think we had, before the webinar started, we had some questions about TOEIC. TOEIC. Um, yeah. no, I, none, none about Duolingo, but so, yes, I think somebody was asking about TOEIC, so it's good It's good to know. Yeah, that, um, but unfortunately, we don't we don't accept it yeah, at Ulster. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so a few more questions. Again, I'm just trying to go through them and go back through them as, as best as possible. Now, quite a number of people were asking about their eligibility if they weren't living in Vietnam or if they um, were working in Vietnam or working freelance. So I will, I'm going to put I'm going to cut and paste into the chat our answer to this and then I'm going to talk talk through it. OK, so if I can put that in the chat first of all, and again, remember, we're going to put all of these into the um, into the uh, FAQ document afterwards as well. So basically, as we mentioned and as uh, Kane mentioned before, you know, we are looking for teachers in Vietnam who are working in the government. Uh, education system in this in the state system so basically if you're if at present you're teaching and delivering the Vietnamese English language curriculum to your learners then you should be eligible whether that's in a public school or a private school that would that should be okay however if you're delivering an international curriculum if you're in a private school that's doing delivering for example the international baccalaureate or some other um, international and non-Vietnamese curriculum then there may be some issues there or if you're delivering a teaching through a private language centre, for example. However, that having been said, um, there are two other things that we can consider. I put their past experience and your future intention and think about what Kane was just saying and what I was saying earlier as well. We're looking for teachers and te or teacher educators who can demonstrate a contribution to the furtherment, the development of English language teaching and the English language teaching profession in Vietnam. So in terms of past experience, can you demonstrate something that you've already done to support teacher development in your community or in the wider ELT community? And in terms of future intention, can you articulate through your answers to the questions? Remember, Kane just showed you there are 10 questions that are asking you to really reflect. That's why, again, it's it's not a case of rushing and filling in the answers, as Kane said, as quickly as possible. Try to take your time to think carefully about the questions 
and think about how you can articulate what you have done, what you are doing at the moment in your school or community, and also what you plan to do in the future once you've completed your program. Your, it's two, remember, it's a two year program. What do you plan to do to contribute to ELT development in Vietnam? and to the development of your teacher, you know, CPD uh, teacher development in your community or in your in your area. If you're living abroad, if you're living outside of Vietnam, I think it might I think it might be a bit more of, a, of an ask unless you have some intention to come back to Vietnam and contribute to the Vietnamese English language teaching um, system, then it might be a bit more of a challenge to be able to articulate that through your through your responses to your answers. So that would be that would be my response to those questions about that. Um, Kane, would you anything you'd like to add about that? No, I think I think that really covers it. Um, the other day. Thanks. Yeah, again, it's for us. It's really about you know how can you, whoever you are and whoever you work, whichever school you're working for, how can you contribute to the further development of the English language teaching community here in Vietnam? That is that is the the, the kind of the number one the overriding aim of the program um, and that's and that's how the applications all the applications that are submitted will be will be considered okay and um, so i hope that answers because i said quite a number of questions about that um okay i'm, just, I'm trying to go through and again my colleagues now and we if you've got any if there are any other questions you can think of please um i'm just going to go through the ones that I, I can see at the end and then i'll work backwards work backwards through um thanks chang for that answer um can i apply if i'm teaching at oops it's just moved a school using the cambridge curriculum okay all right um well, i have to think about that one that's a good question maybe you can show us a bit a bit more information about that like a uk or just academic ielts uh can you answer that last question uh kane about from uh from Vung or we about UKVI uh, yeah. ielts or just academic ielts uh, yeah, it, it should be the higher level IELTS for the academic yeah. IELTS. Yeah, Zhang, I think Zhang was asking, Win Ti Ha Zhang, how about certificate of the sixth level foreign language proficiency framework for Vietnam? Could it be accepted instead of IELTS? Again, I think it depends on the, um, the level of that as well. OK, so we need evidence of your language ability. Yeah. Um, there was a question here about age limit. Is there any issue of age limit from here? And Jim? I don't think so. <laughs> no. no, no, no issue. We we welcome students from from of any age. OK, so it doesn't matter if you're you're 22 or you're 60. You're okay. welcome here in Ulster. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Kane. Um, yeah, there's a question there from here and we need to here when applying through the Ulster University Scholarships page, must I attach all of my scan certificates and translate them into English, Kane? Uh, no, it, that won't happen until you have been awarded the scholarship. So we don't need to, to see your certificate at, at, for your scholarship application. But if you are offered the scholarship, then the university will ask you for your certificates as well. So that may involve you, um, it may involve translating but um, we will we'll support you through that process if you reach that stage. So at this point, um, you do not need any certificates um, at this point. Thanks, Kane. Um, now there was a question earlier at 4.28 from Nguyen, I think it was. Um, he wanted to ask some, and maybe if you can, if you can turn on your microphone, maybe you can ask the question or share, I'm not sure if you can share the screen. Can you see that, Kane? It was about the. Um, not sure if you can see. Okay, yeah. So I can yeah. see. Uh, yeah, I can see. So, so what you you looks like. Um, yeah. So it looks like you're trying to apply through the university properly, rather than apply for the scholarship. So uh -huh. you need to apply to the scholarship first. Don't, as I mentioned, don't apply directly through. They, uh, to directly through the course um, because that's not a scholarship application. So using the link that that I put in the chat box, I'm, I'm a British consul, I've put in the chat box, please use that to apply first of all, and then we will let you know when and give you the necessary links to apply uh, directly to university if you've been successful with your scholarship. 
Thanks, Kate. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a good piece of advice. Actually, if you've got any questions, go through the British Council landing page website first, and or the Ulster one, which is again linked. There's lots of links to the right page, the page that the Ulster University page that Kane just mentioned, and make sure that you go through those links rather than through the Ulster University's kind of general website because that will take you in a different completely different direction so again we can that it's important that you that you do that more questions about the language proficiency again Emily has asked just recently my IELTS expired in February I'll say so do I have to take the IELTS exam again okay um yes you will have to take it again before um before you would be admitted to the university if your IELTS has expired yeah, exactly. But th that would happen uh, after you've been awarded the, the a scholarship place. And I think we are providing the IELTS tests. Isn't that correct? That we are, we're, 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 we're supporting the IELTS exactly. test financially. Yeah. If, you, if you need to take your IELTS again, um, we will pay for it as part of your scholarship. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think we put that. Over, we've already mentioned that a couple of times, but and I mentioned it in the chat as well. And again, we'll put that in the FAQ document as well. Again, Mike, as you're putting all your questions in the chat and some of our responses, either written responses from me in the chat or spoke, uh, spoken responses from Kane and myself, what we're going to do over the next few days, even though it's a holiday the holiday starting tomorrow in Vietnam. Um, over the next few days, Kane and myself will look at all the questions and we'll draft some responses and then we'll put those onto the, the websites, onto the British Council website and um, alongside the recording. So uh, Huang, Huang Ho just asked about is the record link of this meeting, will it be sent to your emails? Is that right, Kane? It will be sent through the yes, emails as well. Uh, every, everybody who registered for today, I will send them right. um, both sets of slides and the recording as well. Right, brilliant. Yeah, and we can certainly we can certainly put on onto the onto our website as well, the British Council website, the slides, uh, British the ones that I shared before, the ones that Kane shared as well from Ulster University, and again the FAQ document as well as the recording. So you should be between the two websites, the British Council of Vietnam page and or the Ulster University page dedicated to this program. Uh, not the general Ulster University website, you should be able to find the information over the, over the next few days, probably at the beginning of next week. Um, a few more questions. Yeah, Nyum, I think, has asked uh, about, she's teaching at VIN School using the Cambridge ESL curriculum. Wondered if I'm eligible again. Um, for now, I'm gonna, thanks for the, <laughs> clarifying your question. I assume it was you who asked the question earlier. Yes, it was you asked the question earlier. Yeah, I think, again, how can you demonstrate that Previously, at the present or in the future, you're going to contribute to the to the development of English language teaching in Vietnam. If you can demonstrate that and you can really articulate that, then we could perhaps consider your application. Again, as Kay mentioned, there's going to be we imagine there's going to be a lot of competition for these nine places. So again, it's about you uh, demonstrating that through your application and thinking very carefully about your application, your application uh, responses to the to the the ten qualitative questions that um, that Kane mentioned earlier in his introduction in his um, in his um, presentation. I hope that answers your question, Neil. Uh, Emily's asked. Sorry, Kane, please. Oh yeah, sorry. I've just just um, uh, no. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Please. David. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I hope it. I hope it is. I know. It, I hope that has answered your question. So appreciate you saying that. Uh, yeah, Emily's asked. So it means that I can apply for the scholarship first and take the IELTS later. Yes, is the short answer to that, Emily. You you can do that. Okay, as long as you feel confident that you know. Again, as Kane mentioned, you know, if you put your application in, if you were successful, and then afterwards you didn't reach the six point five across the board. Um, then we we might have some we might have to have some reserve candidates and we'd, we'd go to those reserve reserve candidates so just be be mindful of that and be mindful of what your English lang language proficiency is at the moment and whether you'd be able uh, to meet to get 6.5 at, at IELTS and again there's a reason for that as Kane mentioned earlier is because this you know it's a master's course it's a postgraduate course so it's going to be challenging um, so again, that level of English will be really important to help you with you, through your studies over the next two years. OK. Yeah, there's a question here, um, Kane from Hui. Um, 
Oh no, I'll vote. I'm not sure. <laughs> we we and Kang Vuong, so I'm not sure if it, I think it's a we. Um, can you provide yeah. some information about how online lessons are delivered? Okay, so uh, yeah, our online lessons will be delivered. Um, they're delivered through a a, num a number of ways. Um, we generally use a system called Blackboard uh, at Ulster University, which is called a virtual a VLE, a virtual learning environment. So uh, when you become registered as a, an Ulster University student, you will be added to what we call Blackboard. And here you'll be able to find all of your resources, all of your lectures, everything like that. Um, our lectures, will they will be delivered online, but they will be um, synchronous lectures. So it will be face to face. Uh, and we'll be using, sometimes we, it will depend on your lecturer. Some lecturers prefer to use Teams like we're using now and some prefer to use another system which we call Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which is it, it, it's quite similar to this. Um, and then we use a range of different technologies as well. And as part of the programme, we're actually going to be showing you how to use these technologies yourself and how to run your own sessions on Teams or on Blackboard Collaborate or on Zoom as well. Um, and that means that you can, when you finish your programme, then, then then you can start to to run online classes or on online um, uh, CPD workshops for fellow teachers. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's a range of methods, and you will generally study. You you will generally have lectures, approximately about five hours per week of lectures. So that will be two evenings a week. Our our terms are twelve weeks. So that, that, that will happen over the 12 week terms. Um, you do have a reading week usually um, about halfway through um, and we will be organising the um, times to really to, to around around you guys as well, around the nine successful scholars. We'll be kind of negotiating the best days and the best times for for you to take your your sessions. So I hope that answers your question. We, Thanks, uh, Kane, for answer, answering that question. And there's another question here from Huang Ang. I think he posted it, or I think he posted it earlier. Will I can't read it because it's been. <laughs> will the instructors of the program be Dr. Barbara Skinner and Dr. Helen O, as listed on the university's website? Uh, if not, can I please know where can I learn about this information? There you go. Yeah. Kane, so uh, it's yeah. So it's actually. Actually, Professor Barbara Skinner and I recently just made professor. She'll be one of your lecturers. She takes the language acquisition module. Um, Helen uh, Helen Ho, uh, Dr. Helen Ho will also be one of your lecturers and she will be doing your TESOL methodologies. Uh, your knowledge about language will come with me. Um, and also we, we, we will probably have an additional lecturer coming on to the course who's a who's a bit of an expert in online instruction, so she'll be working with you as well. So you're going to actually, you, you'll have a range of different voices during your programme. You won't just be stuck with me all the time because that'd be quite boring. So you're going to have a <laughs> range of different voices coming in, people with different backgrounds and different expertise, uh, and this will all kind of improve your, help to build a, a kind of really good learning experience. OK, thanks, Kane, for that. Yeah. I hope that answers uh, Huang Yang's question. Um, yeah, the, there's a few Pearson, questions about the Pearson VDI jet set. Yes. I'll just have to, I'll, I will just have to look into that just to, to check with the university admissions to yeah. see if we are accepting that at the moment. If not, you will you will be taking your IELTS test after the scholarship has been awarded. Yeah, so as, as I mentioned, just we've only got about five minutes left um, before we wrap things up. So, yeah, I think Again, just to reiterate, we're going to gather my colleague is already uh, my colleague Queen here in Hanoi has already been capturing many of your questions. Obviously, some of them are, are repeating or similar, but questions like that, we'll put them all together and we'll tr we'll um, give you a responses to that, hopefully by early of ne early next week. And we'll upload that document early next week. So again, it gives, gives Kane and myself some time to, to think about our responses to those. So you get a very, hopefully you get a very clear answer. So for example, things about the, you know, the language test or the proficiency test, you know, that you've got a very clear answer to that. Um, now, Nun has asked, uh, the latest one popping up, do I need to take the IELTS test if I, if I have already obtained a master's degree in Australia? Um, I, I think as an international student at Ulster University, you will need to provide an up-to-date uh, language 
um, a certificate. So probably yes, if your IELTS or equivalent yep. is out of date. Exactly. And I think, again, we've mentioned it on a few occasions. Remember, you know, if you don't have an, any, an existing or an up to date IELTS or equivalent certificate, then we, we, the British Council, have already said that we're happy to support you in that as well to, to, to sort of retake, retake the IELTS test. OK, um, yeah, I just want to pick up on the comment from Jenny, uh, the summary uh, from Jenny. I think that's thank you, Jenny, um, at 448 for those of you who are scrolling up and down through the chat. I agree with your summary. I think, as you've said there, your understanding is right. I think you can you can certainly apply for the scholarship, provided you can explain your contributions to the development of the teacher community and the ELT development in Vietnam. That is that that is the key. That is the over that is the overarching, as you've said there, it's the top criteria for considering. So don't worry too much about this. The 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 the, the wording of like the government sector because that might be seem a little bit. Um, might be some confusion from that so yeah i think that's that's a, a very nice summary thank you for that uh, <laughs> a question from lady mi chang not related can we work at the british council when we receive this scholarship <laughs> uh, no it's a short answer <laughs> great question but i think the short answer is no it's a bit more a bit more involved than that <laughs> um Maybe in the long, maybe in the medium to longer term you can, Chang, but not not in the short term now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, you can ask for more questions if I've not if I've not answered that question. I'm just going to the the FAQ that my colleague Queen's put together so far. Um, ah, there's a question here. If I couldn't get the fully funded scholarship, are there any chances to get a 50% or a 30% scholarship? Uh, from the British Council side, the answer would be no, because again, we're looking at fully funded scholarships. And I think that I'm pretty sure this, the same would apply for, for Ulster as well. So you'd nothing you'd add to that, is there? Um, uh, okay. No, 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 there's nothing else to add to it. Um, yeah. Just the last thing, the last thing I would say is, you know, if you are not successful for this particular scholarship, there are other international scholarships available in, on the Ulster University website, so it may be also good to have a look at those. And then, then some of those are partially funded scholarships, so. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, exactly. So other other options, but not certainly not from um, not from uh, from us. Uh, OK, thanks, Jenny. Yeah, that's good. Um, thank you so much. This time I'm not eligible, but I hope there'll be other chances. OK, thanks, uh, Fung Lan. Yeah, uh, I apologize that you're not eligible. But that, again, that's the whole point of the webinar is to help you. We don't we certainly don't want you to um, spend time. If you can see from the from what you've learned today, from listening to Kane and myself and from the from the, the Q&A in the chat, if you can if you can see, oh, unfortunately, I won't be eligible then. At least, at least you know that you're not eligible. Okay, so that's that's good to know. Um, but yeah, thanks for your comments, Fung Lan. Age limit. I think we've already mentioned that. Uh, whack, whack. No age limit. Um, Ulster University are an equal opportunities recruiter, so no, no issue there. Um, Emily, so if we get the scholarship, is there any fee we have to pay for? I don't think so. No, any fees. No, the no, we cover no, with that. We cover, that's yeah. the idea bet between us, between British Council of Vietnam and Ulster University. The idea is that we cover the fees, all the tuition fees, your IELTS, any IELTS fees that you may need to take uh, to prove your language proficiency. And then for the two weeks next June, as Kane has mentioned, again, flights would be covered and uh, the accommodation, there'd be a stipend to cover costs there. So no, is this the, hopefully yeah. the, short an the short answer is no, no for that. Not not unless you do lots of shopping when you come to Ireland, then <laughs> that will be the only, the only <laughs> that will be your own decision. Exactly. All right. Um, and are there any chan chances like this in the future? Yeah, that's a great question, Emily. Um, again, this opportunity is very much part of the, the season. I mentioned earlier, this is part of our 30th anniversary celebrations. But again, ongoing conversations about that, whether, you know, if this is successful and if we can if we can really demonstrate evidence in terms of the learning uh, from the nine applicants and that they can imp improve and impact on ELT development in Vietnam, then maybe there will be opportunities in the future. But at the moment, short in the short term, this we're focusing for the next two years, we're focusing on on this opportunity. OK, so I hope that answers your question. Um, 
Tom, I think that's Tom, has asked, besides application questions, are there any doc documentation we need to prepare, like reference letters? Kane. Um, not uh, not until you're awarded uh, you, if you until you're awarded your scholarship. So um, for your scholarship application, you do not need any documentation, but you just got to be sure that any 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 qualifications that you do mention in your scholarship application that you will be provide be able to provide evidence of those if you are successful for your scholarship. If you can't provide the evidence, then we'll have to offer the scholarship to someone else. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, I can see uh, Chang. Thank you for your <laughs> thank you for the answer question. Yeah, I think as as I say, if you're working abroad. Um, even though you're, you know, Vietnamese citizen, again, it's it's very much about if you are work living and working abroad, it would be quite difficult then to demonstrate, you know, how you could contribute to the ELT development in Vietnam at this point in time, unless you unless you have plans for the for the for the near future. So yeah, I think that I think you've kind of answered your own question there, uh, to be honest. And I think yeah. at, fi at five o'clock in uh, in Vietnam and eleven o'clock in the UK, I think we've pretty much answered all the questions. I'm looking at my colleagues now and Huyen and they're nodding their heads. Um, so thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope that's been useful. I hope we've answered all of your questions. And again, um, we will put, as I say, over the next few days and the early next week, we'll try to put all of your questions and all of our responses together in one document into an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions document to help you uh, over the next few weeks. Um, similar scholarships in Malaysia, not to my knowledge, um, whoever that was, uh, Chang. Sorry, Chang. Um, again, it's very much about the, the season, the 30th anniversary in Vietnam. Um, thanks, Ian. Um, yeah, so just a, rem a reminder, as Kane mentioned earlier, that applications are now open and live from today. So you can go on to the link and you can um, start reviewing the application questions. Um, at, but as Kane said, I think it's really important to reiterate what Kane was saying earlier take some time over the questions, particularly the qualitative questions. There are 10 of them. Um, so think very carefully about that. How, again, reiterating what Kane was saying, how are you going to stand out? How are you going to demonstrate or articulate what you have done and what, what you are doing or what you plan to do to, do, to further your own career, but also uh, the development of ELT in Vietnam? That, that really is the, the point of the, of the programme. Any final words uh, came before we wrap up? No, uh, just um, thank you for everybody for attending today. Um, we do have another webinar in May. If you want to come back for a second round, you're more than welcome. Um, please share this information about these scholarship opportunities amongst all your colleagues within the institutions that you're working at, because we want to kind of reach as many people as possible. Uh, otherwise, just good luck and enjoy your enjoy your holidays over in, in Vietnam, your upcoming holiday. Thanks, Kane. Yeah, and I'll just re reiterate that. Have a great holiday, everybody. I know it's, we've, got, we've got a nice long holiday in Vietnam over the next two, five, maybe even a whole week for some people. <laughs> OK, um, so enjoy that. Enjoy the holiday and wherever you're going. And yeah, use the time to reflect on the webinar today. Reflect on whether you're eligible or whether you're interested and uh, think about your application. Remember, application closes on the 29th. 29th of May so you've got just over a month just over four weeks to submit your application so plenty of time to reflect and plenty of time to put your work on your answers and develop your answers as, as Kane was saying earlier okay thanks everybody uh, thanks Jenny for putting your camera on have a great weekend have a great holiday and we'll